Hello everyone, my name is Ashley Neubauer and this is my final presentation on Miller Indices. Miller Indices are a system of coordinates used to describe the orientation of an atomic plane in a crystal lattice. Miller Indices can be used for all the crystallographic planes except the hexagonal crystal system as there is a different method used to find these planar indices. Today I will be showing examples with the cubic crystal structure and to the left here, we have a few examples of what those would look like. But nevertheless, Miller indices are reciprocals of the axial intercepts for a plane, and all parallel planes have the same Miller indices. Also, they can be useful for understanding certain concepts for material science, including shapes of single crystals, material microstructure form, interpreting x-ray diffraction patterns, and movement of dislocation. Next we have the notation. Miller indices are labeled HKL, which corresponds to the X, Y, and Z axes respectively. There should be no commas used between the numbers, and to denote negative numbers, an over bar is used. As you can see in this example right here, this would be negative one, zero, zero. So when referring to planes and directions, there are different types of brackets that are used. So for a specific plane, parentheses would be used, and this is what I will be focusing on today. But for a set of planes related by symmetry, curly brackets are used. Then, square brackets are used for direction, and for a set of directions that are symmetrically equivalent, angle brackets are used. And all of these are written with the same notation, except for the brackets. So there are five steps to determining the Miller indices. First, if a plane passes through the origin, a new parallel plane must first be constructed, which can be done because all the parallel planes have the same Miller indices, or a new origin must be established at the corner of another unit cell. So to demonstrate, this is my origin, and if this purple plane were intersecting at the origin or passing through, then I would have to make another parallel plane or create a new unit cell with a different origin. The second step is to identify the intercepts of the x, y, and z axis in terms of a, b, and c. The third step is to take the reciprocal of the intercepts, and if a plane is parallel to an axis, the intercept will be infinity, and its reciprocal would then be zero. Fourth step is to reduce the reciprocal to the smallest integer value, meaning that no fractions. So if necessary, all the numbers can be multiplied by a common factor to get a whole number. And if these numbers can be reduced, you can divide by a common factor, but the set of numbers must remain whole numbers. The last step is to put the set of numbers into parentheses with no commas. And as stated before, the indices are labeled H, K, and L, corresponding to the X, Y, and Z axes. So now I will demonstrate how to solve the first example using the 3D cubic crystal structure that I created. So here on the bottom, you can see these are the different angles of my 3D model. So first, I need to check to make sure that my plane isn't passing through the origin. My origin is right here at this corner, and it is not. So we can continue, and then identifying the x, y, and z intercepts on this bottom model. From this angle, this is our x, the y is here, and the z is here. Behind the plane on this angle, it is here for the x, the y is here, and the z is here, all behind the plane. So the intercepts would be 1 for x, 1 for y, and 1 for z. So then we label that as our intercepts. So then taking the reciprocals and reducing, we get 1 for all the points. And finally, just putting the numbers into parentheses, we have our Miller indices. Now I will demonstrate how to solve a slightly more complex example with the second 3D cubic crystal structure that I created. 
So as you can see here on the bottom right, this is all the different angles of my second 3D model. So first, checking to make sure that the plane does not pass through the origin. The origin is right here at this corner and also right here on this angle at this corner. It is not. So then identifying the X, Y, and Z intercepts, here's the X axis, here's the Y axis, here's the Z axis, and above the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. So my X intercept is one. And then my Y intercept since the plane does not pass through and it is parallel, that will be infinity. And then the Z intercept is at about three fourths. So then taking the reciprocals and reducing, we now have one zero and four thirds. So since we have a fraction, we need to reduce by multiplying by a common factor, which would be three. So getting, doing that, we get three, zero, four, and then putting all of that into parentheses, we then have our Miller indices at three, zero, four. This brings me to the end of my presentation on solving problems involving Miller indices and two examples of how to solve with crystal cubic structures. Thank you for listening. And are there any questions?